My name is Colin Neal. I, um, I work for Adian. I'm the SVP of Business Development. I run the new Manchester office for Adian. Uh, and I'm going to have a little bit of a different conversation with you today with regard to payment in that really I'm not going to talk about payment. I'm going to talk about Adian's customers and what payment actually means to customers. Because at the end of the day, it's the customers that matter. It's not the payment, it's the customers. So the best way to do that is I'm going to introduce you to a number of customers that we work with today. I'll give you a little bit of background. Some of them you will have heard of, others you won't. Um, five very different customers, and then we'll talk about why we've actually termed this presentation Dare to be Different. We'll get to that in due course. So Uber, you'll all be aware of Uber. Some interesting facts about Uber if you're not aware. So Uber trade in 83 countries, over 260 cities worldwide. They have 40 million rides a month through one and a half million drivers and they have 150,000 new users every day. O'Neill, again another partner that we work with. So O'Neill is an iconic uh, brand, very, very innovative. Trade in over 86 countries worldwide and they trade directly from over 1,000 retail stores. Not on the highstreet.com, some of these you may not have heard of. So this is a UK marketplace brings together over 5,000 creative businesses to sell unique gift experiences through one checkout. Moss Bros, a UK high street retailer focusing on men's formal wear, trades from over 150 stores and a number of new concept stores that were introduced to focus on what they call the Tailor Me personalization solution. And Amanda Wakeley, a UK fashion designer flagship store in Albemarle Street in Mayfair, renowned for her cocktail dresses and fashion accessories, now available in over 50 countries worldwide. Okay, five very different retailers or businesses that we work with. So what do they have in common? So for us, they have one thing in common, which makes them quite unique in the way that they look at payments. And that is why we termed the session Dare to be Different. So today you will hear lots of conversations from different payment providers who will all tell you a reasonably similar story. And what we tend to find is that businesses that innovate and deliver real forward-thinking solutions for their customers have wrapped their arms around payment. They challenge the traditional way that an organization would normally manage payment and they have one unified approach to delivering payment across their organization. And in doing so, they define one way to enhance their customer experience. Payment is irrelevant unless it does something for your customer. Okay? And to that extent, that is where we see significant parallel between these customers that we talked to you about today and the way that Adian works. So we've been on the stand, we're just around here, and we'd love to see you after. But the most common question we get asked over the last two days is, who are you and what do you do? Okay, and it's an interesting conversation to start because we normally throw it back to you to say, well, who are you and what do you do? Because it's actually what you do that matters to us. Okay, so Adian is a, and I get my tongue tied on this bit, right? So you'll catch me when I get it wrong. Okay, so Adian is a Dutch company and the word Adian is Surinamese for let's do it again. Okay, so Adian was founded in 2006, and Adian had a very straightforward approach. The approach was all around making sure that payments was accessible to everybody. Okay, what you'll see is that the payment infrastructure that sits behind the payment industry today is incredibly fragmented and incredibly complex. And Adian wanted to cut through that, they wanted to make it easy. They wanted to make sure that you could get access to payment and in turn, give the right experience to your customer. And we did that through the introduction of a single platform. And what I promise you today is I will not talk to you about lots and lots of features sitting underneath the Adian platform. We are truly one platform that services you, whether you are e-commerce, whether you are point of sale with retail stores, whether you are Moto or whether you are app, it is one platform. And that's as far as my technical explanation will go today because if you want to talk more, you can come and see us on the stand. Okay, so there was a lot of synergy between the retailers and the customers that we talked to you about today and Adian because we both dared to be different. Adian challenging the way that payment worked, 
the customers that we work with challenging the way that they embraced payment inside of their organisation. And what I'll do is I'll talk to you about a couple of things that were relevant to those retailers or those customers in terms of what they wanted to do to reach their end customer. Enriched customer insight. Okay, So I deliberately haven't talked about single view of customer because other than the word omnichannel, it is probably one of the most overplayed things that you will hear in retail. And it means something different to every single person that you talk to. But what our retailers and our merchants told us was that in order to remain relevant to their customers, they needed to be able to make informed choices. And to be able to make informed choices, they needed to know more about their customers. And whether that was about appropriate marketing, bespoke content, specific loyalty programs, they had to remain relative. So there are a number of things that they told us as part of that journey. Their customers did not remain loyal to their channels. They couldn't track their customers. They would shop in store, they would shop online, they would use an app. They couldn't determine when they would do that, but they knew that they would just navigate through those channels that was most convenient to them. And they also told us that actually when they do shop online, we have some information about them. And based upon that, that is what we build our view of customer around, what they do on e-commerce. The prospect of working with Adyen brings a little bit extra insight that is quite unique in the space. Customers who shop in retail stores pay. When they pay, they pay with a card. When they pay with that same card online, we see the entire activity of that customer. We see where they shop, when they shop, how much they spend, which stores they go to, which countries they travel to, when they shop online. And that richer data becomes invaluable to our retailers because it allows them to understand what their customers are actually doing. But more importantly, there's no friction for the customer. We're not expecting the customer to enroll in every single store that they purchase. So reliance on systems like customer relationship management are removed and it makes the purchase journey far more convenient. And convenience is a term that we'll all talk about an awful lot because we know it's the most important thing to a customer to not get caught in that payment trap. Local payments. So we hear an awful lot of talk today about actually if we want to expand we need to offer the customer the payment method that they know and they trust. And it's a fact and it's true. And what we see an awful lot is that when merchants look and customers look to move into other countries that they've never previously worked in, they tend to find they can't be as agile as they choose to be. So I'm just going to give you a few facts just out of interest to see how much you know. So in 2017, in Germany, 50% of all e-commerce traffic was cross-border. They purchased from outside of Germany. So if you're a UK-based e-commerce uh, retailer, it's fundamentally important that you can offer the right payment methods for those German customers. And they don't want to pay with card, they want to pay with SEPA, they want to pay with SOFORT. If you don't offer that, you can't attract that German customer to your platform. If you trade in uh, Holland or the Netherlands, then overwhelmingly all transactions are paid for through Ideal. So if you think about launching a website into and you want to reach those customers in Holland, you will not reach those customers if you don't offer the right payment method. But the next fact is quite interesting. So if you work in the UK, there's a really interesting fact that actually, to some degree, just blows everything else away that we discuss. So today, there are 600 million active users of WeChat, okay? Those users of WeChat spend 66 minutes a day chatting to one another and looking at advertisements that are posted on WeChat. And last year, they spent one and a half trillion euros using the WeChat app. So if you trade in cities or on websites where you have customers who are coming from China, that is a huge opportunity that you cannot afford to miss. Okay? so. Local payment methods, being able to get a, a enriched view of your customer, all sounds great, but the important point for the customers that we've talked to you about today is that they didn't want to make their operation any more complicated. And that's one of the things that we see generally in the marketplace today when we talk about payment, what we actually mean is we want to reach a customer base without making the way that we work more complicated today. And what underpinned everything that we did with those merchants was the ability to consolidate. So through a single platform, 
you reduce the number of integrations that you need, you integrate once for e-commerce, you integrate once for POS. You work under one contract, you work under one reporting framework, you have one method of settlement. In retail stores, you have one terminal that surfaces all of your payment methods. Okay? So, in summary, what I want to do is play you a little video as we close before I take any complete. Well, I'll take the easy questions. My team at the back will take the really difficult questions. So, if you want to ask any really difficult ones, feel free. Um, but what I want to leave you with is just one thought is that the way that we work is trying to change the way that you think about payments. You shouldn't see payments as a boundary to the way that you do business. Payment is a way of doing business. And the best way to remove that boundary is to change the way that you think about how you manage it inside of your organization. Thank you.